Hey guys, fish room slowly creeping along. Started scraping these two tanks. This tank has a layer of gravel in it. Oh. See how it, it calcified it. This, I have two options. I can clean this by soaking it in vinegar and hope that does the trick, or I can just scoop the entire tank and throw it away. Which I might do. I have buckets, I got four buckets of gravel sitting in the backyard. This tank, buddy had laterite in here. That's what this red dust is right here. It's very fine. I don't, uh, I don't think I want to keep that in there just yet. The problem with this stuff is as soon as you add water, it's going to cloud the whole tank. And what I plan on doing is actually is uh, giving that th tank the test. I'm going to have to move some, some of this stuff. I don't want to water damage anything. I'll give it the test. And the, by the test, I mean, you know, fill it with water, see how it holds. If it's good, great. Then I'll drop it down by half and then fill the other half with vinegar. Seems like an expensive waste, but it's not. It is so not. This is, all, this, this is calcium, all this crud. And by soaking it with water and vinegar for two, three days, I should be able to just wipe that right off. And then whatever water is in this tank, I'll move over to this tank, do the same thing. And then over to that tank and the same thing. As you can see, they're all they're they're filthy. They were they've been neglected for years. Now, buddy that uh, that I bought these tanks from, he's a smoker, and not to sound like I'm saying anything bad about the guy, because he's a good guy. He just he just made some some rough choices. He because uh, he's a smoker, there's a a layer of or film, if you will, of smoke and crud on the outside. I have to find a way to clean off just so I can see the fish. Because I, so I so dearly love taking pictures of my fish. And with a film like that, I can't. Because then you'll see it. 40-gallon breeder. This tank is a leaker. I need to, to clean it out and uh, reseal it. That won't be a, too much of a problem. It'll be tedious. But it's doable. As you can see, the uh, the glass tops that came with the tank are on incorrectly. They should actually be turned. That's actually the back right there. The same with that end. They should be aligned along the back. But there's a piece that goes here that's missing. And there's a spacer that goes along the back that's missing too. That being the case, I've decided I don't care made this divider, put it in, it's good to go. <clears throat> a little loose, but I'll deal with it. Now, what I'm going to do is I will probably uh, probably knock that and that out and feed my uh, heater cord and my, uh, my uh, sponge filter line through here. Yes, folks, sponge filter is the way to go. I'm not going to uh, do a power filter on this tank. Uh, I'm not ready for anything yet, but once things get up and rolling, this tank will most likely be a, a grow out tank. So keep the tank covered. I don't want anybody jumping out. This may not be a surprise, but I'm in love with cichlids. Of course, who isn't? And uh, uh, I believe I mentioned in a previous video that the 433s that are going on this stand are going to be uh, uh, South American. And uh, yeah, I've got uh, Dumarilli dumber angelfish, uh, dwarf flag cichlids being laid at Cara curviceps. And I've got flag cichlids, which are Mesonata insignis. And then I've got some Cribenzis. And then I've got some Panac Macus and some Bristlenose. <coughs> we'll, we'll go from there. I know for a fact I'm going to have more than just those guys. Because really, I mean, 
Here's my flag cichlid tank, my angel fish tank, my flag cichlid tank, my curbenges. I'm going to go in that tank right there. That will likely be a grow out tank for baby curbenges because the, the pair I have, they spawn quite regularly. I, I, know there's, I know they're crebenzas, but they're, they're different. Most male crebenzas have spots on their tails. This guy, he does not. When I get him back, you'll, you'll, you'll see him. And that tank, I don't know. I want to do a planted tank, but I might just do a, uh, a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? a tank buster tank, if you will. Some sort of big cichlid. Hey, buddy of mine's got uh, blue acaras. I might do some of those. I like blue acaras. They're they're very attractive fish. These ones are the lighter variety. There's a, there's a dark variety. It depends on where they come from. But this tank right here will be my dwarf flag cichlid tank. Uh, the later acara curbiceps they like, like to spawn on uh, flat surfaces. So on there or on there doesn't really matter where the spawn will occur. Of course, I'm, I'm, I'm counting my eggs before they hatch here because, really, I have no fish. But in due time. So yeah, slowly taking shape. I'm going to build a stand for this guy. I've got a 50 gallon that's the same length. I think it's wider and taller, but I don't care. <clears throat> Six foot long tank, so what if that, that tank overhangs or doesn't quite meet the edge? I'll, I'll live with it. So, yeah, that's how things are going right now. If you don't have one of these in your fish room, <clears throat> you should. And it doesn't exactly have to be an exact copy of one of these, but something like this. Music. You're gonna sit and enjoy your fish. You might as well listen to music too. And to be honest, plants love music, and fish, well, as long as it's not too loud and there's not too much vibration, they don't care. So, comments, questions, let me know.